There's two versions of DMT that people sometimes mention. There's DMT, which is most of what this discussion will focus on. And then there's something called 5-MeO-DMT. Can you briefly just describe the difference between those two compounds? Sure. So both of them are naturally occurring, NN-DMT and 5-methoxy or 5-MeO-DMT. Um, DMT tends to occur and can be extracted from plants and in DMT, while 5-MeO-DMT is primarily found at reasonable doses or psychoactive doses in the bedum of the buffalo varius toad, uh, Sonoran Mexican toad. Um, in terms of the kind of effects it produces, they're both short-acting. 5-methoxy-DMT when smoked is a bit more prolonged, some say. And the quality of the experience is um, different, at least from what we know from anecdotal reports. So NNDMT induces this very rich, content-filled experience. Uh, you're seeing a lot of objects. People are engaging with these objects, these entities, these beings, these feelings of inhabiting different places. It's a rich experience. With 5-MeO-DMT, people appear to have a very radical sense of ego dissolution, uh, meaning that the subject-object distinction, which we carry in the world, uh, usually completely dissolves away. Um, and it can be quite extreme to the point that when people are having that experience, many times they feel they're experiencing their own deaths. And it seems to provide an experience in which people are no longer having any sort of reliable content, but having just an experience of a white light and an experience of some, somehow having an experience of everything and nothing at the same time, which is not necessarily something hard to get your head around when you're just hearing that. Uh, so it says that it induces this this very strong ego dissolution experience. So the, the contrast between DMT and 5-MeO DMT is while both of them are fast acting, one has a lot to do with characters and contents that people experience and an immersed relationship with that content. Whereas in 5-MeO DMT, it's, it's a massive sort of ego dissolving experience in which people reach to a point in which they no longer experience any content whatsoever. And they just have this experience of the white light Mm -hmm. So DMT, in terms of its subjective effects, is reported to be very rich in, rich in content, as you say. People literally see stuff. It's very immersive. I've heard it described as almost like a, an extremely compelling and extremely bizarre virtual reality experience. Can you talk a little bit more about the common threads that come out of people's reports of the subjective effects, just so that we can sort of paint a picture to the best of our ability of what the subjective effects are for people that haven't experienced it? And I want to do that before we get into uh, brain stuff. So it's very fast acting. There's lots of content. It's very compelling content, whatever exactly that means. And there's a lot going on in the DMT experience. Are there any common themes to the visual aspects of the subjective experience that tend to come out in reports? What we found in our research is that the, the experience, um, you know, from you can think of experience from a structural perspective or a content perspective. From a structural perspective, uh, we mapped out that this experience has a, you know, it involves the body, uh, the visual sort of perception and emotional contents, broadly speaking. These are the th three main structural domains that are affected. What we find that it's a reliable aspect of the experience when we give it intravenously is that people have this, at the beginning of the experience, a strong sense of energy, uh, bodily rush happening in their bodies. Um, many people who have other sort of experiences uh, with uh, yoga and kundalini and things of the sort liken it to a form of kundalini sort of rush awakening, you know, an energy tra transversing the body that has a lot of 
carries a sense of edge and uh, a sense of also deep meaning. After that, people have uh, uh, that immersive visual quality experience. So they 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 go through what some people call this breakthrough DMT experience, which they're no longer seeing uh, you know some geometrical patterns, which you encounter with other sort of psychedelic drugs. But they're now breaking through into what seems like different reality or dimension. Uh, this is when you give high enough doses to people. And while they're having this experience of breaking through uh, into this different sort of realm, um, at the same time, the body kind of like goes away into the background. People, while at the beginning had this strong sense of rush in their body, no longer feel their body's presence. Some people feel they're having an out-of-body sort of experience, not necessarily looking into their bodies, but in a way feeling that they're experience is no longer anchored to their body state uh, when, which when you think about it is curiously similar to the experience of dreaming uh, you're having a very visually engaging experience um, that can have a fantastical character to it but you're no longer attached to your body uh, and your environmental signals so it's a detached but it's a virtual reality experience and then after this, this strong sort of breaking through into the space subsides after a couple of minutes, uh, people start coming back and, and making sense of what happened, integrating the experience, if you will. And in that integration, emotional content starts to arise. Um, uh, kind of like taking in the messages that they got from that experience and and how it reflects in their relationships in their own lives in their notions of spirituality in their notions of reality sometimes um etc um so these are some of the features and another i think guess uh, within that i kind of mentioned it is that uh many when people have high enough doses of and then DMT, they go also, they, they, they can have what is this called the, sometimes as this ontological shock, uh, reaction or experience is that the experience feels more real than real. It seems to carry some sort of authority in terms of the contents that it's providing the teaching. And that has something to do with the nature of reality. Um, and that can change people's worldviews as well in a, in a significant fashion after the fact. Do people, when they have a DMT experience under controlled conditions, do they, it, it, do they normally look back on it in a positive light, in a negative light, a mix of both? Is there any commonality to whether or not people are evaluating the experience as a good one, a bad one, or neutral? It depends very much on the what we call the set the setting, um, the intention people might have, and so on. Um, how well they are prepared psychologically to have that experience. Um, in the context of ayahuasca, uh, DMT is a big part of ayahuasca. It's not the whole thing, but it is a big part of that. In the context of ayahuasca, um, people find, many people find a lot of meaningful experiences in that. And the set and setting of ayahuasca is a, is a, is ca can be a culturally rich setting. There's a lot of songs, there's rituals, um, and it's also a longer experience. Um, and a lot of people find meaning find a positive effect out of that experience. With DMT, when it's given on its own, let's say in a lab setting, like you said, injected, the experience can be very fast and can be a bit overwhelming. So again, depending on the level of preparation that the person has, that can be a satisfying experience. Uh, some people can find it even pleasurable, like in, in terms of uh, a sensual sort of pleasure that they get out of the experience. Um, uh, many times we've seen that people provide um, 
a very strong sense of aesthetics, a sense of beauty, of appreciating the beauty of the experience in a way that they hadn't done so for many, many times, for a long time before that. So just the experience of beauty as having uh, an inherently healing quality to some extent. Uh, just a thing that doesn't get talked to very much, which I find particularly interesting. Um, and sometimes challenging experiences. So sometimes people can have overwhelming experiences in which they no longer, they, they struggle, it's not that they struggle with the experience in terms of how did this is fit, but it can be scary. The encounters with beings can, can provide a sense of uh, realness uh, that is a bit sometimes overwhelming for the person. Uh, nonetheless, also in some of those occasions, those challenging experiences can be uh, fruitful for the person if it's somehow dealt in the right way. Um, but yeah, it's 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 varied uh, for sure, and and very much depending on on the level of readiness that the person has. Mm -hmm.